Good afternoon and a happy Mother's Day to all mothers. Welcome to Midday Live from our news hub here at Adesawa in Kanda. I am Wendy Lai. The headlines for this afternoon. Ashanti Regional Prisons improvise to contain new inmates whose status need to be determined before putting them in cells. On the fine front, an alert system to rank threat level of coronavirus in England is set to be launched by the government. I've got the details of these stories and many more lined up. Let's start with one of our headline stories, and we're heading straight to the Ashanti region, where the regional deputy director of prisons says they have to improvise to contain new inmates whose status need to be determined before putting them in cells. He told journalists after the chairman of the Ghana Chamber of Commerce donated PPE to the prison. The Kumase Central Prison has currently exceeded its capacity to over 100%. With original image capacity of 800, the prison now has over 1,900 images. More continue to come in the wake of the COVID-19. We cannot refuse the judge's order from a court of competent jurisdiction to refuse an inmate to come to prison. So we are doing our best and then we need assistance so that we can decongest some of the uh, prison establishment that we have in the country. Nana Apieji, the president of the Ghana Chamber of Commons who donated PPEs to the prison, encouraged individuals and groups to reach out to the prison. The place is so appalling. And uh, so we appeal to the public and the individuals who have it to come in to their aid and support them. It can be food, water, and any other form. The Techiman Municipal Health Directorate has also taken delivery of PPEs from corporate Ghana. We'll head straight to the Ashanti region shortly and get some updates from Ashanti regional correspondent Vasky. But let's look at some more stories this afternoon on Midday Live. And um, I'm told I can speak to my colleague Evans Inkum, who's joining us via Skype. Hello, Evans. Hello, Wendy. Good afternoon. Well, good afternoon and uh, happy Mother's Day. A happy Mother's Day to all mothers in the Ashanti region. And um, what's the latest in relation to COVID-19? Now, we just read a story where the prisons there are saying that they have to put in place some measures to prevent further spread should it happen. Now, what measures and what exactly is the update you have for us from the region? All right, so Wendy, uh, in the prison's um, story, that their, their, their issue is very serious because I quite remember a month ago when... I visited the, that particular place. The narrative was that they were not expecting any inmate um, in order to be able to contain the already inmate that they have in, this, in, in the prison because they, they didn't have any place to hold uh, any suspected case. And that was very serious. We thought there wasn't going to be any kind of uh, well, adjudication that was sent any convict or whatsoever to the prison service. It was only uh, a week ago that we heard that inmates are still coming. I mean, new uh, convicts are still um, going to the prison service. And that was quite worrying. So we, 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 we wanted to know how they are containing a situation like that. And honestly, because we don't have that kind of um, opportunity to enter the prison yeah, it was very difficult for us to ascertain the veracity of the claim that they now have a holding center. But you could see some that kind of inconsistency as to whether indeed they have a holding center or they are now creating one. Maybe we will still continue to dig deeper to really know or ascertain the veracity of this particular claim. But people are still worrying as to what exactly is happening mm -hmm at the prison's yard, whether they have a holding center that can take care of new inmates or the already, I mean, uh, densely populated uh, inmates in that capacity. Now, beyond that, or in that facility, beyond that, we're also looking at how people are adhering to the social distancing protocol. If you come to the central business district today, Wendy, it is a mess. 
Mm. And I'm just coming from that particular place, and you could see the level of, uh, one would say, uh, non-compliance as far as uh, the, the, the WHO protocol is concerned. Look, on a normal weekday, the picture is different. On weekend, it, 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 it appears or it, it's as if the laws have relaxed, Wendy. Mm. Now, Evans, just behind you, I can see too clearly, but even in observance of the protocols, I can see um, a vendor, someone who sells um, airtime or probably does mobile money. There were about two other gentlemen there, but are they in nose mask? Aren't they worried about um, what's happening? And uh, are they interested in following the protocols? Are they in nose mask? If, if you can, if you can observe and let me know. You're absolutely right. I mean, as you can see, the evidence is not far-fetched. Uh, the two or three people that I see or you see behind me, they are not. And you can also see the level of closeness as they, as they stand. One is sitting, the other one is standing. And they are very close. So there's, there's not so much a distance if they are to observe the two meters interval or in two meters apart, mm. the standard has been recommended. The, the, you, you, I mean, and this is, a, this is one of the examples that you find in the central business district. It's quite worrying, especially when we continue to have growing number of cases as far as the Ashanti region is concerned, Wendy. All right, well, thank you very much indeed, um, William Evans Inkum, for that update. And um, you bring us some more of the updates in our subsequent bulletin. And yesterday there was a press release from the Ghana Medical Association, that's the GMA. I will get it shortly and take you through that press release. But before I do get that for you, let's move on to some more stories this afternoon. And the news of 533 positive COVID-19 cases recorded at an industrial facility in Tema has heightened anxiety among residents. The cases follow an outbreak of compelling testing of 1,300 workers of a factory now in that area. Josephine NJJ has been interacting with some residents and has come through with this report. Ghana's case statistics for COVID-19 stands at 4,012. Recoveries have reached 323 with 18 deaths. Greater Accra alone stands at 3,436. 50% of these new cases recorded was as a result of an outbreak in a factory at Pung in the Tema Free Zones enclave. Out of 1,300 workers of that factory that were tested, 533 were confirmed positive. In the Ashaiman municipality, there are 53 confirmed cases with one death and eight recoveries. With a major port and three industrial hubs, business is brisk with a lot of activities. On a normal day at the Long Room, a popular centre at the port for users, people troop there to process their document in order to clear. But this scene tells it all, as many were spotted not observing social distancing protocol. Sources in the health directory told me the metropolis and Ashaiman are recording more cases, making it a hot spot. But what do residents in Tema and Ashaiman make of it? I buy no more. I'm on my information, you know. And I'm not more feed, you know. And I'm on the I'm not more cover. Government from time to time updates us on COVID-19 cases. They have the information. We that, that we are home don't have any knowledge. So when they tell us that a shaman has some cases, then we need to be careful. As for the COVID-19, I haven't seen anyone affected by the virus anywhere. All that you hear is that more cases have been recorded and others recovered. But I'm not afraid. Oh, Miss Ro. Yeah. Oh, dear. Sabi, sabi, sabi. Oh, bien, oh, Miss To Miss Ro, pa. I am scared by the new figures. There is no one who is not afraid of death. But we wish we could see affected patients on TV so that it could convince others who are doubting. 
I think the virus, the virus is in the system, but we should not be afraid because even fear, when we fear, when we eat, it will not digest. So one cannot say whether it is ignorance or people feel that we are back to normal times. Perhaps the law needs to be enforced so that people will abide by the safety protocols. Just been NTAJ, TV3 News. So early on, I told you about the press release from the Ghana Medical Association, and I do have it now. This release was signed by the president of the association and its general secretary, and it reads that the Ghana Medical Association, GMA, is taking into consideration the number of new COVID-19 cases in the country, mostly from community spread and seeming disregard for all the preventive measures put in place by large sections of the population, hereby states as follows that the COVID-19 pandemic is real and it is here with us in Ghana and is still a major health threat to all persons living in the country. Non-adherence to the COVID-19 preventive measures at this point in our collective fight against the disease has a huge potential to erode any gains made so far. This has also the propensity of to escalate further spread of the disease. All persons living in Ghana should endeavor to adhere strictly to all the preventive measures such as the ban on public and social gatherings, social distancing, use of face mask, hand washing and the running water with soap and the use of alcohol-based hand sanitizers. Government should strictly enforce all the preventive measures so far put in place to ensure compliance. His Excellency, the President of the Republic, should not lift the ban on social gatherings for religious activities, schools, my ceremonies, funerals, etc. Our international borders should remain closed for now. Government must ensure prompt and continuous distribution of PPE to all health workers at their various institutions or places of work at all times. This will guarantee the safety of all health workers as they continue to render care to patients. And the last one being all medical doctors and other health professionals should continue to dedicate themselves to the fight in the interest of Mother Ghana in spite of the huge sacrifices we have made so far. And that's from the Ghana Medical Association. We'll bring you more of that in our subsequent bulletin. But still related to COVID-19, calls have intensified for governments to help Guineans stuck abroad to the executive order on travel restrictions to return home. Now, lawyers say there is no legal justification for the country's laws to bar its own citizens from returning home in times of emergency like COVID-19. Here's our reports by Dennis Fabri. We must do everything within our power to contain the spread of the virus. Firstly, all our borders, that is by land, sea and air, will be closed to human traffic for the next two weeks. That was President Nana Adudankwe Kufuado on March 21, 2020, during his third address to the nation on measures taken by the government to mitigate the spread of the coronavirus pandemic. It was subsequently backed by an executive instrument, EI-64. Eight weeks on, Ghanaians unable to return home are looking forward to the lifting of the ban. But they will have to wait at least for two more weeks as the borders still remain closed on executive orders. Affected persons including rappers like Sarkodie, who is stuck in the United States of America, and Papi Kojo, who is also locked up in Italy, have pleaded with government for a window of opportunity. Member of Parliament for North Tong and ranking member on the Foreign Affairs Committee of Parliament, Samuel Okujetua Blakwa, says he has been inundated with calls from Ghanaians stranded abroad and want President Akufuado to hear their plea. Quote, Receiving many calls from Ghanaians who have been left stranded in other countries following the closure of our borders as part of measures to limit the importation of COVID-19, I appeal to President Akufado to grant our fellow citizens a narrow window of return and be quarantined, he wrote on Facebook. Discussing the legal implications of the executive instrument which gives backing to the travel restrictions, renowned Kenyan law professor said restricting Ghanaians from returning home is not justified. 
Wherever your citizens are, there is no piece of legislation by whatever definition, by whatever justification that can say that I, as a Ghanaian who, is, who was caught up in Kenya or in China or any other part of the world, would be denied entry into Ghana. The law must allow me to get into Ghana. And if for any public health reasons I ought to be quarantined, then I ought to be quarantined at the state's costs. Executive Director of the Ghana Center for Democratic Development, CDD Ghana, Professor H. Kwesi Prempe, agrees. If somebody is stuck, they must be stuck for reasons unrelated to a law in their country that denies the entry back into the country. Must be because the airlines are not flying, not because my country will get me back into the country. There shouldn't be any such law. Lawyer and PhD candidate at Oxford University, Mamia Bena Mensa Bonsu, also in agreement, stressed that it is the right for every Ghanaian to be in the country if they so wish. Consider a Ghanaian who went abroad for a, a function, who went on a six-month visa, who is stuck there because the borders to Ghana are closed, and now by the operation of their own state, they are a criminal in somebody else's country. It's... To me, it's, it's a big concern. We, we did do some mandatory quarantining, and I, expect, I understand that it's expensive. And so there may be concerns about you know, the, the cost involved. But uh, for the state of Ghana to make a Ghanaian a criminal in another country, mm -hmm. I think that very, at, a, at its core, that, that makes you wonder why you should be a Ghanaian then. But government says it would first have to engage health experts and assess the risk factors before making any move. The closure of our borders are still in force, uh, but I know also that various other scenarios are being considered. Until such a time when the borders are opened, the fate of these Ghanaians stranded abroad hung in the balance. The virtual legal discussion series was organized by the University of Ghana Law Faculty under the banner Law in Crisis. We must do everything with it. Let's look at some more stories. And World Vision Global has projected some 72 million people of the world's population would be hit harder by poverty in the advent of COVID-19. Now, in Ghana, poverty is said to have forced some parents to push their girl children into early marriage. Here's a report by Stanley Nibliu. According to World Vision, COVID-19 would permanently leave a scar on global development and aggravate poverty, especially in vulnerable communities. 36 million children out of 72 million people projected to be affected globally by the impact of coronavirus would go hungrier, sicker, less educated and exposed to more violence and abuse according to World Vision. It added the international community ought to prioritize long-term risk from the impact of COVID-19. In Ghana, World Vision has allocated $4.2 million to support the fight. Water, sanitation and hygiene facilities will be enhanced with the support. National Director Dixon Tunde said any hardship caused as a result of the coronavirus could force more girls into child marriage, thereby eroding the gains made. Poverty has been the real major drive uh, into uh, child marriages. Now with this COVID-19, more and more families will become desperate and that can actually force more girl children into uh, marriages. Uh, so those are the kind of things that we will be using this uh, additional funding to focus on. As classroom education remains suspended, World Vision Country Director wants internal control mechanisms to protect children who access the internet to study. Some people are propagating online learning for children. That has its own challenges because we don't want children to be exposed to pornographic material. So there have to be some proper internal controls uh, that will protect children uh, from experiencing more uh, hardships. World Vision West Africa Director Kala Denizad proceeds lifting of Ghana's lockdown amid soaring positive cases is not ideal. 
once countries show that there is a slowdown in the transmission of the virus, then they can start removing some of the restrictions. But where we are now in Ghana, the cases are increasing at an alarming rate. So we're not at the point yet that I think that we can lift up um, those restrictions until we're sure that the education, the sensitization, and the access to PPEs can be put in place so that when these social gatherings occur, people are protected. You're still watching Midday Live with me, Wendy Lai. Food vendors at eateries and other joints TV3 visited in Accra are complying with the Ghana Health Service Directive on the wearing of nose masks. Food vendors, commercial vehicle drivers and every other facility accessible to the public have been subjected to compulsory wearing of nose masks following the increase in the number of COVID-19 cases in the country. People used to come here and then we serve them. They sit, we serve them and then they eat. Dancing was also being observed. People used to come here and then we serve them. They sit, we serve them and then they eat here. But Champion is a popular eatery in Accra. The place is usually full to capacity, but things have changed in this time of COVID-19. All the food sellers at the time of our visit wore masks, and the supervisor says they took the initiative to protect themselves and customers to prevent the spread of the virus. Social distancing was also being observed. People used to come here and then we serve them. They sit, we serve them, and then they eat here. But because of the outbreak, we've stopped. Um, what they do is that they come in, buy their food, and then take it home. They don't eat here anymore because of the outbreak. Apart from that, you could see that uh, we have some square buses on the floor, which people are in for us to ensure social distance. At this food joint, the sellers also wore masks. Esinam Aguado said, Aside complying with the Ghana Health Service Directive, it was imperative for them to protect themselves. I wear the masks from the house, and when I reach the worksite, I use it for the cooking, and after that, I change it before I start selling. Because of the heat, that makes me change it. At the other food joints the news team visited, vendors, including the backroom staff, complied with the wearing of the nose masks directive. Most patrons also wore their nose masks and some said they were impressed with how the sellers were complying with the directive. We have to comply with all the other protocols by wearing a face mask wherever we go. So I'm impressed with what I'm seeing now. A lot of places, they, they are wearing the nose mask. People are complying, but not everybody. It's very, it's very good wearing the nose mask because it prevents you from getting the disease. And when someone calls for sneeze, you don't, you don't get it all. When someone has them talking to you, the nose mask prevents it from you getting infected. Others say, though some food sellers go contrary to the directive, they have no option but to still buy from them. Evelyn Tinkma, TV3 News, Accra. Remember, it's, it is important to always, uh, always stay safe. You're watching Media Live. We have more shortly. Do stay with us. Thanks for staying. The former president and flag bearer of the NDC, John Dramani Mahama, has donated some items to inmates of the Kumasi Central Prisons. The intervention is to support the care of inmates. The items included toiletries, hand sanitizers, nose masks, and bags of sachet water. The Ashanti Regional Chairman of the NDC, Nana Akwisi, led some party leaders such as former Kumasi Mayor, Samuel Sapon and former Akomfu Anochi Teaching Hospital CEO, Dr. Joseph Aplaku, and other party executives to present the items. We did presentation of 100 bags of water and sanitizers and 1,000 pieces of nose masks and some other items that we are giving to them. Receiving the items, Chief Superintendent Hannah Hilda thanked the former president for his intervention. We are very grateful to the former president, His Excellency 
John Zamani Mahama for coming at this crucial time to support us. As a human institution, we have to put measures in place to be able to fight this pandemic. And as such, these are items we really need to protect our inmates as well as the officers in our custody. I believe it will go a long way to support us. So we are very grateful to him. In a related development, the Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly has also donated food items and PPEs to the female section of the Kumasi Central Prisons. The items included crates of eggs, bags of rice, sugar, gari, soaps, detergents, and hand sanitizers. Presenting the items on behalf of the mayor, the Metro Environmental Health Director, Isaac Basenye, said the donation is to support inmates' rationing and safety. DSP Vera Jekle, who received the items on behalf of the prison's management, thanked the mayor for the support. She assured the items will be used for its intended purpose. When we receive things like this, it goes a long way to improve their daily uh, ration. So, on behalf of the Director General, we want to say a very big thank you to the Mayor. Away from the prisons, but we still stay in the Ashanti region. An electricity company of Ghana is constructing a 15 million city primary substation at Algo to reinforce its network. Now, the company has additionally invested 29.5 million cities into various interventions aimed at improving and strengthening electricity supply in the region. Here's a report by Benjamin Edu. The Ashanti region has been experiencing intermittent power outages for the last two months. The widespread power outages have been a worry to businesses and residents. Areas affected include Bomso, Ahinsane State, Krofrom, Dichemso, Buokrom, Tafo, Edum and Asafo. ECG says its new investment is directed at improving operational efficiency and customer care in addition to creating systems reliability and security in power supply. Managing director of the company, Kwame Ajimambudu, says the measures instituted will help place an end to the outages. We come to realize that there are some old transformers that need to be changed, cables, relays, reclosures, sessionalizers, and all other things. To mitigate this, we try as much as possible to replace most of them. We are trying to construct a primary substation at the Agogo area, which will link Konongo, Agogo, and Jusso together so that we have a stable you know, uh, service. The ECG has also put in place mechanisms to ease fault detection. In our current situation, to detect fault is like trial and error. We don't have a system whereby it can pinpoint the exact location, but we are trying to implement a new system called VIT. Instead of the whole line going off, you can sessionalize the portion and just close the other end so that the other uh, people on the other end can get service. More from the Ashanti region and the Roads and Highways Minister, Christian Makwata, has cut sword for the construction of the Swami Magazine internal roads. Now, the 10-kilometer road project is to facilitate fast movement of vehicles and improve business activities within the enclave. The road network within the Swami Magazine Industrial Enclave continues to worsen after years of neglect. Several potholes have developed on the roads making driving uncomfortable and stressful. Vehicles have to slow down and meander their way through from one end to the other. Users of the road complain of frequent breakdown of their vehicles. Yes, Chairman of the Ghana National Association of Garages at Swami Magazine, Nana Osei Bonsi said the poor road network is having a toll on business activities. He is hopeful the reconstruction of the roads will boost business activities in the area. Our roads so bad that they are on more trouble these days at a very deplorable state since our roads are very bad the jobs are going somewhere else because you know if you get inside magazine before you can get out it can take you more than one hour or 30 minutes after the roads are first a lot of jobs are going to come here because it will be easy to come in and easy to go out to address the concerns, government has initiated work 
on 10 kilometers of road construction within the enclave. Roads and Highways Minister Akwesi Amwaku Atta said the project is in fulfillment of a campaign promise by President Akufu Addo. He noted the government will not condone shoddy works by any contractor. <laughs> Yes, you took crying an amount thousand kilometers, you know. What the one step in the baby can now? I'm running now. Yet, when you need now, you have to be a TBH if you have a patagana for a profile. Yet, Juma now on a GCK now on call on your Juma or your Juma back home. A new Africa, the Soto back home now. A planning last day. Then the Bufado a Merso number on Tatabia or your Bema on your side a Juma. Yes, Member of Parliament for Swami constituency and Majority Leader Osei Chairman Sabunsu advised artisans in the area to desist from parking and repairing vehicles on the road as it shortens the construction lifespan. <laughs> And he said, "Idiya, oh, now how do I go far back and back to Omoka? And ye ye ka. So ye ye kwa ye ye ask for a jumbo. Now ye oil and gusua. E kwa no. Actually, I was saying yes, I was saying no. Let's say the artisans are hopeful the completion of the road project will boost economic activities in the light industrial area. The project to be executed by the shop Construction Limited is scheduled for completion by the end of the 2020." Away from the Swami magazine, let's focus on health. And Ghana has an estimated 0.05% of COVID-19 infection rates on a weekly basis. This is according to researchers in statistics, biostatistics and epidemiology at the Kwame Kuma University of Science and Technology. Ghana had so far conducted over 130,000 COVID-19 tests with a backlog of more than 1,000 samples awaiting testing at the Kumasi Center for Collaborative Research in Tropical Medicine. The Noguchi Memorial Institute for Medical Research, however, had no backlog. Dr. Nana Kena Frimpon at the Statistics and Actuarial Science Department of the KNUST said once the backlog of cases is cleared, test results can be provided within 24 hours. When it comes to tracking and uh, tracing and testing, um, it was Noguchi that I, I read a report saying that they have actually cleared all the backlog. So henceforth, they, actually, they can actually do a real-time testing, which is very fantastic and good for us to get much more information about the growth of the epidemic or the care. Dr. Frimpon called for the establishment of more testing centers in the country. He also spoke on the country's recovery rate. By WHO protocol, you have to do double testing before a person is actually cleared of the, the virus. So after going through the first testing, it takes a lot of days for the second testing to be done. At the same time, it is the same uh, resources and infrastructure that we have to do the new cases testing. So they cannot, I'm seeing that they cannot do it simultaneously. So it's some kind of a lag that is causing this recovery rate numbers not to uh, go high as, as compared to the number of cases. And remote education and heads of second cycle schools in the Eastern region say over 1 million cities is spent annually from internally generated funds to fumigate the schools to fight the spread of bed bugs in schools. Now, this, according to heads of the schools, has become a major challenge and called on governments to draw a budget to support the schools for the exercise. Here's a report by Frederick Clarence Williams. Vector Control Unit of Zoom Lion Ghana Limited step up its fumigation exercise of public senior high schools and some private in the eastern region. The exercise, which is under the auspices of the Ministry of Education, seeks to rid the schools of bed bugs and other insects. It is also to create a conducive learning environment for students. Senior high schools in the eastern region bemoaned huge monies used annually to fumigate to eradicate bed bugs. 
So it's been the biggest trouble that management is facing and spend a lot of money disinfecting every term, every by the end of every semester you spend a lot of money on it. So this is a welcome news that you are coming around to disinfect the area and to control bed bath and other forms of meat said that you have around. The heads of the schools called for government intervention to enable them to have a conducive environment. The money that is given to us, we have to use some portions to be doing such. Uh, when we see that it is unviable for the students. But in my school there is also a dress care, something, a medicine that we ask the students to get. And that one is their personal ones that they use. Okay. It's just about five cities. So when they get it, they are able to use them anytime. So, so far, it's somehow manageable. Classrooms, dormitories, laboratories, mattresses, among others, were all fumigated. A total of 117 senior high schools and six special schools were fumigated in the eastern region. Away from the eastern region, the Accra Regional Police Command says some inmates in the regional police custody have tested positive for coronavirus. Now, Accra Regional Police Commander DCOP Frederick Edu Enim said all the inmates have been quarantined and are awaiting test results. He made this known during a press briefing at a fumigation and disinfection exercise in Accra. Another report by Frederick Clarence Williams. Ever since Ghana recorded its first case of COVID-19, there has been a lot of discussions on the various categories of the population who are at higher risk. One of the categories singled out is the prison population, which according to statistics is overpopulated by 5%. The Accra Regional Command stepped up its fumigation and disinfection exercise of its facilities, including prison custodies, to curb the spread of the coronavirus disease. The commander, DCOP Frederick Edu Enim, said about three of the inmates have tested positive of the coronavirus disease. Some of the inmates have already contracted the disease. We have separated them from uh, the first suspects will be uh, coming or uh, will, uh, will come into our custody. He indicated all the inmates at the prison custody have been quarantined and are waiting test results. He reminded the public to continue to adhere to the safety protocols to lessen the impact of the coronavirus pandemic on the economy and social life. The four-hour exercise saw the charge office, prison cells, police quarters compound and other facilities of the Accra Regional Police Command fumigated and disinfected. We have more shortly. Please do stay. Welcome back. Let's look at some more stories this afternoon. And an Accra High Court has granted bail to eight persons accused of being part of a plot to destabilize the country. Each of them were granted bail to a tune of 10 million CDs with two sureties to be justified and must show proof that they have properties worth 10 million CDs.